Hi everyone, today I've got a 1588 Amati violin to show you, and if I'm being perfectly honest, this was meant to be a smaller video, but there was just so much information that I got carried away. So let's take a look at the instrument. This is a 1588 Antonio Amati, the Mendelssohn. Uh, it's one of a few remaining examples of a piccolo violin from the time period. Now, that means that it's a little smaller than a normal violin. It's about a three-quarter size instrument in its dimensions, and it was originally tuned about a third higher than a normal violin, although this one was tuned normally. So there are two arguments as to what exactly the function of the piccolo violin was. I'm inclined to lead towards the latter, but let's see what you think. The first is that the piccolo violins were made specifically for women, that it was a ladies' instrument, and it was smaller, more elegant, as opposed to the man's instrument, which was a full-size violin. The second is that when the violin was first becoming popularized as an instrument, is that it already had a lovely soprano range. However, to achieve an even higher range, luthiers would sometimes make piccolo violinos to reach the highest register. And then they could use this to play high woodwind parts, like the oboe, when necessary. Now, for me, the argument about the two different sizes for women and men doesn't really make much sense, and I haven't been able to find a lot of evidence for it. But my reasoning is simply because the violin was never viewed as an acceptable ladies' instrument until much later. And in fact, a woman violinist was not accepted onto the stage until the late 1800s with the great violinist Camilla Orso. The pianoforte, and later the piano, was a much more acceptable, accomplished ladies' instrument. If the instrument, however, was used to replace higher ranges, that makes more sense because large advancements in the instrument started to take place in the early 1800s like I mentioned before, with Louis Spohr's invention of the chin rest in 1820. Also the lengthening and tilting of the fingerboard, higher notes became possible, along with more flexibility in the higher positions. The piccolo violin seemed to have gone out of style by the late 1600s, and this lines up with the first of the fingerboard advancements. Okay, so now you hopefully know a little bit more about what a piccolo violin is. So we're going to take a look at the Amati side of it. instrument is an Antonio Amati, or is it? Antonio Amati's father, Andrea Amati, made the first instrument that could actually be called a violin. That was around 1550, and that is to say it was an instrument with four strings tuned to an approximate E, A, D, G that was held on the shoulder. This newfangled instrument was an immediate hit for professionals specifically because of its purity of sound. This is as opposed to the viol, which was treated much more casually. It was held a little bit off the shoulder and it was played much more frequently by amateurs. So the violin already enjoyed this sort of social status and it easily spread through all the European courts all the way up to England. Um, Amadi's shop became very popular and he then taught his sons Antonio and Girolamo the family business. <laughs> worked in the shop from around 1557 until his father's death in 1577, learning to craft the violins as well as all the other string instruments that were made in the shop. Most of the instruments under Andrea Amati's label from the 1560s and 70s are probably Antonio's work, 
and after Andrea died, the shop was taken over by the two brothers, Antonio and Girolamo, with the joint Brothers Amati label. They worked together until 1588 when they split ways, so there's no real way of knowing if Antonio or Girolamo made this instrument, though it's under the Brothers Amati label and it's often credited to Antonio. This instrument eventually found its way into the collection of the Mendelssohn family. Yes, that Mendelssohn, Mr. Felix, although he himself didn't play it. It was his nephew's instrument and he used it to study on and probably like every other historical instrument out there has had Mendelssohn's concerto played on it dozens, hundreds, you name it how many times. It's actually incredibly elegant, and I, I really wouldn't mind playing on this all the time. It does feel small under, under my hands, so then again I have small hands, so that probably wouldn't matter too much. But for the size of it, it really packs a punch. It's, this is an incredibly interesting, elegant little instrument. It has an incredible amount of sound despite its size, and it's really lovely. It even has the original wax seal still intact on its back. This is an instrument that you shouldn't really push in terms of sound, even though it really could handle it. And even though it was originally designed to be a smaller instrument for higher pitches, any kid would be super lucky to play on this and have it compete easily with a full-size instrument. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if there's a specific instrument or maker or anything else you'd be interested in learning about in terms of violins. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe for more performance and violin videos and till next time.